Well, thanks very much. Uh, let's go across to Nisha. Nisha, thanks uh, for joining us on CNBC TV 18. I want to start by asking you about uh, investor enthusiasm and investor sentiment ahead of the Indian elections. Foreign direct investment has been something that the Modi government has been pursuing uh, to bring in more of it. If you look at the Congress manifesto, it also talks about giving importance to FDI and national treatment, in fact, for FDI. How are U.S. investors looking at the upcoming elections? Well, I think uh, the upcoming elections are being watched with great interest uh, in the United States and around the world. Um, we saw a, a big surge in FDI during the uh, um, you know, uh, initial years of the Modi administration. I think the prime minister came in with a huge uh, uh, backing of uh, a global community that was looking for an India on the rise. And we've seen uh, enormous uh, growth in India over the last several years, uh, with India being the fastest growing large economy uh, consistently over the last several quarters. Um, with the elections coming up, I think you've seen a little bit of a pause amongst investors as they wait to see what's going to happen on the flip side, uh, both in terms of whether there's going to be a continuity of government uh, and also whether the government is going to um, uh, retain focus on its reform agenda, the very robust and ambitious agenda uh, that was uh, uh, unveiled kind of in the 2014-15 time frame and, and whether there's going to be a resumption of that trajectory. So I I think uh, there's a lot of anticipation in the investor community uh, in the United States and around the world, and uh, we shall know the results of all of that soon enough. <laughs> Yes, we will. On uh, specifically the 23rd of May, we will know what government India gets. Uh, and of course, uh, post that, we'll know whether there is more continuity of policy uh, and specifically what next on the reform agenda. Uh, but if I could ask you, Anisha, what's the sense within the uh, investor community specifically on areas of concern? Uh, I was speaking with the former RBI governor, Raghuram Rajan, and, and the e-commerce policy, for instance, uh, he believes uh, has created a degree of nervousness uh, among foreign investors uh, that, that, you know, we're back to an era where there isn't predictability or as much predictability as foreign investors would like when it comes to policy making and policy decisions. What are the key concerns at this point in time that foreign investors may have? Yeah, I, I think uh, I think he's absolutely correct. I think the e-commerce policies and the changes that were announced earlier this year uh, were a shock to the system, uh, particularly when there had been very robust investment uh, FDI coming into the e-commerce sector. Um, it kind of created a little bit of uncertainty and, and unpredictability on whether uh, there would be transparent, predictable um, um, policies that. Uh, companies could bank on and that investors could bank on or whether uh, there would be abrupt shifts. Now, I do think that uh, there is some uh, expectation that in a post-election climate that this should stabilize and that there should be kind of a resumption of a more deliberate, consultative uh, process uh, on e-commerce and on a host of other uh, policy areas. So while it was a shock to the system, um, I think that there is a a desire to wait and see what comes after the election and how uh, how the government uh, coming in post-election is going to uh, engage uh, FDI, what are going to be the kinds of assurances uh, in terms of uh, India's investment climate. Um, there is a lot of bullish sentiment on India still, but it has taken a bit of a wait-and-see mm. approach. Um, I think that uh, uh, India has the opportunity as it continues to be one of the bright spots in a global uh, investment climate. Uh, India has the opportunity to really capture uh, all of the FDI that is really sitting offshore waiting to find a destination and, and to bring that into India to fuel India's growth, to build India's infrastructure and to help power Indian enterprises. Mm -hmm. uh, let me talk to you a little bit about what we're seeing happen uh, uh, between the two governments, Nisha. Uh, the U.S. has decided to withdraw the GSP benefits. India still holding back on the retaliatory tariffs. Uh, we've seen several deferrals on that front already. Do you believe that there is space and room for negotiation, uh, even when it comes to the GSP benefits, for instance? Well, 
there's always room for negotiation. One of the things that I learned uh, it, during my time in government is that um, the time for dialogue is always now, uh, is always present, and that window never closes. Uh, I think that the administration's uh, 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 notification to Congress on its intent to uh, withdraw GSP uh, carried with it a 60-day window. But even beyond that 60-day, I think that the U.S. government has always indicated uh, their willingness to sit down at the negotiating table and resolve these issues. I think the government of India has also uh, made uh, efforts to engage on that. And what we would seek uh, on behalf of industry is that the two governments uh, make a concerted effort after the election uh, to address these uh, issues and to move to some resolution uh, because I think it will benefit both countries, both industries, and most importantly, the people in both countries. Specifically on the reform agenda, Nisha, what is the expectation? I mean, there's been a lot of forward movement uh, on further liberalization of FDI caps, for instance, but uh, what would be the top priorities that foreign investors would like to see action on from the next government when it comes to the unfinished reform agenda? I think there's going to be a lot of attention paid to where we go in the technology sector on a whole host of issues, not just on the e-commerce issues, but also in terms of data governance, where are we going to be going on data privacy, on data localization. Uh, and, and these are issues that are not just affecting India, but these are issues that are being grappled with around the world, including in the United States. Uh, India, with its massive uh, growth in the digital economy and, and what the digital economy is going to represent in terms of percentage of India's economy, uh, India becomes a very important player in setting norms not just for India, but really norms for how the rest of the world is going to look at these kinds of issues. And that's why they become so critically important uh, for tech companies, Indian and U.S. tech companies, on how to navigate that space. What U.S. India Business Council has uh, urged is, one, uh, that the U.S. and India should be looking to develop some uh, consensus norms, some common uh, um, approaches to data governance. And two, that this should be done with consultation with industry. Uh, understanding the government's need for um, data security, for, uh, uh, for Access, uh, for safeguarding privacy, uh, and also understanding the need for mm. data mobility in today's globalized economy. Uh, what we would like to ensure is that we find some ways for industry and government to come to a, a common approach on how to manage both uh, critically and vitally important interests. Nisha, before I let you go, you've got the India Ideas Summit coming up. What can we expect? Uh, the uh, India Idea Summit, which is going to be on June 12th and 13th in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Chamber, is going to really focus on connecting our cities and states. Uh, we are working with a number of governors in the United States and mayors and senators, uh, as well as uh, Indian states, chief ministers and state officials and uh, central government officials in both countries to highlight what are the big opportunities. Our companies, our members will be able to focus on specific areas in the digital economy, in the life sciences and healthcare space, in the defense and aerospace, um, and, and many, many other areas in how we can grow the U.S.-India corridor to include more and more of U.S. and Indian companies, but also to expand the benefits of our trade to more and more Indian and American citizens. I think this is going to be an exciting summit with some very, very uh, exciting speakers. Uh, and uh, we look forward to uh, engaging with you, Shireen, on the margins of that summit uh, in Washington. Well, thanks very much, Nisha, for joining us uh, with your thoughts on the forthcoming Indian elections, how U.S. investors are looking at that development, and, of course, uh, uh, the India Ideas Summit coming up in June. Thanks very much for your time. Always a pleasure. We'll take a break, but there's a lot more coming up here on CNBC TV 18. 